Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Team Next Generation Wednesday call. It is April 5th, and tonight we are going to be talking all about um, the business essentials. So this is not just going to be pertaining to brand new coaches, however, it will pertain to new coaches, but also it'll be pertaining to seasoned coaches as well, because I think, and I don't think, I know because Dion and I do this, um, and I know that a lot of other coaches do it as well, it's really easy to over complicate what we do and almost put so much effort into what we think is important and it's not that it can be overwhelming frustrating especially like if you go through a month where you have a hard month and you feel like you're doing all this work but you're not getting anywhere it becomes really frustrating and if we can take a step back and look at the absolute fundamentals and how we deal with it and why we're doing what we're doing and how we grow a business things will get a lot easier for us. So that's what we're going to kind of dive in today. Um, it's also going to be a great step into new coaches. Hey, this is how you start your business. This is how you work it. But on top of that, this is how we also introduce new coaches, right? So if you've got somebody that I want it to be that if you've got somebody, you just started coaching and you've got a friend that wants to join you, you know exactly what to do to get them started right and to help them coach as well. And you feel confident in your ability to do so. So that's what we're going to unpack tonight. Um, it's going to be a little bit more interactive, but before we get into all of that stuff, uh, Deanna, do you have some, uh, some, some updates that you want to unpack tonight? Some little housekeeping stuff? Yes. Um, sorry. Like you guys can smell it. I'm eating salmon and I think that I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so it's the first, it's a, you know, the first part of the month, first week of the month. So just, um, if you guys are not aware I guess some, a lot of times I assume that everybody knows until somebody asks me and then I'm like, okay, well that's, I probably shouldn't assume. So I think that we need to address like the beginning of the month, kind of unpack some of the things that are specials and things like that. So first of all, the all access challenge pack is 160. It's fantastic. So you get the year of all access, you get the portion control containers, you get the portion fix and 30 days of Shakeology, right? It's phenomenal. Like $199 is a really great price by itself. So having it for $160 is amazing. So um, there's that. I actually had a coach reach out to me because she actually saw it on the Beachbody website um, about the all access by itself without the challenge pack being $99. And she's like, is this open for coaches? And I'm like, yeah, um, it's, it's an option as well that we've always had but I guess I probably um, forgot to mention it. So this is why it's really important to um, read those emails, check into the team page, because we try to notify you guys, um, as well as checking in your own online office. So you can go to like, I think it's breaking news, um, because they're always updating information. So it's really important to be kind of knowledgeable on, on some things um, that's going on in your business. So 160 Challenge Pack is amazing um, for the all access. Um, their incentive, this month, if you hit Success Club 5 or more, you get an awesome Beachbody backpack. I haven't seen a picture of it yet, but I do have a backpack from them when I went to New Leader Conference, and it's pretty sweet. Um, um, our incentive that we're doing for the whole team, all downline and everything, everybody that hits Success Club 10 will be getting um, the book, Get Over Your Damn Self. So, um, it's a book that I've, I actually just bought myself. I haven't started reading it. It's not on Audible, unfortunately, so I'm going to actually have to physically pick up a book and read. Um, but I think it's a really super simple read. It's a lady that is all about um, network marketing, and um, she just kind of tells it like it is. And it's been really, really recommended by, um, by Tanya, by Jessica, and by a couple other um, leaders. So um, that's for Success Club 10, prize for everybody. Um, there is also the summit, what's it called? I can't even remember my own handwriting, um, success club party. If you're going to summit, um, you want to, um, they have an incentive that if you hit success club five, minimum success club five this month and minimum success club five next month, but it has to be a combined total of success club 20 over the two months. So like say one month you hit 15 and the other month you hit five it just has to equal 20 with the minimum of five. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, you will get a invitation to um, one of the summit parties and I'm assuming it's probably for you and a guest and guys, 
phenomenal. Like they spare no expense. They're amazing, amazing things to attend. Super Saturday is this weekend. If you're not going, you need to change your mind and go. So if you're wanting to grow your business, if you're just wanting to, you know, surround yourself with like-minded people, if you just want to feel good, if you want to like feel like you're you, whatever, just go, just go. Even if, even if it's not for the business, just go because it's so nice being around a community of people and we all just want to belong to something, right? And we all just want to just feel a part of something. So it's phenomenal. Um, they always talk about really awesome things that are coming out. And I guess there's a huge announcement that's going to be, that's going to be, um, announced. <laughs> so make sure that you show up. Um, Portland people, you know, that they have the little, um, professional photo things. I think that starts at eight 30. I think, I don't know. We'll be at the personal development table as usual. So come say hi. Um, and I think, yeah, and I think that's it. That's it. Fantastic. Um, so Portland peeps, if you're going to super Saturday, like Deanna said, which you need to be, um, it's, they're huge there. It's like a massive part of what we do is just the community that's involved there. But we are also a, a group of us, Jessica Vanderberg and, and a bunch of other coaches are going to be meeting at 7 AM at one of the Starbucks right near there. So we're going to be meeting a little bit before the uh, um, Super Saturday. So feel free, come on, meet us. There's going to be more information to come exactly about the location. I was just talking to Jesse about it tonight. Um, and I think it's going to be the Starbucks like on Grand, but don't quote me yet because we don't know for sure. Um, and as far as the success club or the, uh, the challenge pack goes, the all access pass, guys, seriously, that this is going to be the only month that's like that. It was supposed to go up to like 250 bucks. $160 is insane for that. And we're not leading with promotion. It's really just to build the value for you guys. If you ever had a thought, man, I don't know this, maybe it's expensive. And, and that's in the back of your mind. You're not going to find anything out there like every single program that Beachbody has ever created and every program they bring out this year, plus Shakeology for 30 days, plus the accountability groups and you as a coach checking in on people and helping them and supporting them. Nobody's going to find a value like that anywhere else. So we have a massive tool. Don't miss out on that tool this month. Um, okay. So to get to the business essentials, uh, these are things that we need to all do. And I think some of us need to step back and just kind of refocus our, our mindset right here. And I'm going to kind of give it a quick overview and then we're going to dive into, um, really what the invite process, what the talking, all that stuff, the, the conversations, because that's the biggest part of what we do. We're going to dive into more of what that looks like. Uh, as far as daily activities, if you are a brand new coach, coach or you are starting up, as, if you are starting a brand new coach, if you have a, somebody that's interested in coaching and you want to get them kind of rolling, there are things that we need to do every single day to, to grow our business, right? Um, one of those things is we need to obviously be a product of the product. So we need to do our workout. So when we now are kind of what we call guys is an onboarding process. When you have a new coach that wants to start, what you tell them, how do they get started? The onboarding process basically looks like this. I want you to do your workout. Okay. Every day I want you to do as best as you can. I want you to do your workout. I want you to eat well. I want you to drink Shakeology and I want you to share that online. Okay. This is being a product of the product and showing other people that you're a product of the product. If you ever get into a place in your business where you feel like overwhelmed and you feel like, I don't know where to start. And I, maybe I, you know, I don't know where to go from here. It's, it's, it's not, you know, last month was hard or whatever. Refocus, start there, pick a program, start where we all came from in the first place. Pick a program, dial yourself in, start working on the nutrition aspect of it, drink your Shakeology and start sharing that online. That's number one. Okay. Then we need to invite Friends, as a brand new coach, you have what we call a warm market. And that warm market basically are friends, people that you already have relationships with. Everything we do is about building relationships. Our number one goal, if you were on the team call last week and we were dealing with Teamsy, they said that what we are really is a lead generating business. That's what it is. We generate leads. Leads are basically people that you have a relationship with that you can share what you're doing with. The relationship creates trust and trust then creates an open mind for you to talk to them about. That means that if they're at a point in their life where they're ready to start something new, they have a trust in you to be able to lead them to the appropriate product or to whatever it takes to help them reach their goals. Without that trust, we have very little to work with. We are forced to do what they call sell. And that's not what we're about, right? So we are in the, the business of creating new relationships. So when you very first start, you have those 
friends that you've got, people that you've already got that relationship built with that you don't have to start over with, you start inviting those friends, right? You invite them and we'll get into what that inviting looks like, but that is the number one thing. You invite those friends. Then while you're doing that every day, so every day you invite new friends to join you in the next group. Every day you also add three people to your Facebook or if you're not using Facebook and you're using Instagram or another social media, you would, you add five friends to your, to whatever platform that is. We say three friends on Facebook specifically, because if we add too many friends on Facebook, Facebook can put us in Facebook jail. They can get upset about that. They get upset and they lock you down. So that's rare, but just to be safe. So you add those three friends every single day. Now, what does that look like? I literally get on my phone. I go through suggested friends. And if they've got two friends, I scroll their page in about 10 seconds. I see, does this look like somebody I'd even want to talk to or even consider being friends with? If so, great. I press add friend. It's really that simple. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the next step that we do is we've added those friends. The next step we do is we start new conversations. Hold on once. Oh, talking about Sorry. We start new conversations every day. We start three to five new conversations. Now, th this is probably the most important thing we do. These conversations have nothing to do with peach pocket. These conversations are just a high five to somebody. I usually go to somebody's page and I, I choose to try to find people that have positive news feeds. People that I look at their page real quick and I see positivity in there. Those are the people that I see. So I look at them and my conversation just starts like, hey, I noticed, your, I noticed this post. You know, I wanted to thank you for the positivity. I think it's awesome. I love seeing my feed. You know, good looking out, good work. I don't even always ask a question. Just compliment. You're just starting conversation. This does not have to lead to beach body. This is just starting a relationship. You walked into a party, you're saying, dude, I like your jacket. Where'd you get that? Right? If you want to ask a question, great. Even if you don't, they're always going to respond with thank you or something. The point of doing this is because those people, once you run out of the people that you already know, you've already got a relationship, you've invited everybody. These are now the people that you've built that relationship with that you can then invite. If you do this every day, you're never going to run out of a pool over here of people to invite and talk to. But if you stop starting the conversations or you stop adding friends to your network, then you're going to start running out of people to talk to because you've already talked to them all, right? So those are like the absolute keys. These are the fundamental things that we have to do every single day. If you're at a point in your business where you feel like, man, I, I really, I went for it last month and I just, I, I, it was tough and whatever happened, or, you know, I've been struggling lately. More often than not, that comes, if you really look at the process, it comes from one of those things not adding up. One of those things is not happening, right? If we continue to, to start conversations every single day, to invite every single day, to add friends every single day, if we're posting every single day, we're just doing that, just that stuff, we're going to have people to talk to. If you feel like you're not sure of who to, who to chat with, or you know, maybe, you, maybe none of the friends have added you yet, maybe you've been sending these friend requests and nobody is responding to them, right? When you post things, people are going to like it. If your page is public, which it should be, you know, find ways to tag your friends in it right? Then their friends see that they were tagged in it, if it makes sense, right? And then all of a sudden, now you've got a new group of people that have already commented on something. Maybe they know something about you, or maybe they're following you. Then you have more people you can chat with in that realm as well. So there's a lot of different ways, but the key is that we're doing those fundamental things. The, uh, the way, obviously, of those things, the most important thing is inviting, right? If people don't know what we're doing, we're not inviting them to join us, then we, what are we doing, right? So the invite process is, is like, we're actually gonna walk through that right now. We're gonna look and see what that looks like. Then we're gonna get in, after we, after we get done with that, we're gonna get into real quickly what our goal is with the challenge groups. We're gonna talk about the invite and what that looks like and how that should, how that should, how we should verbalize that, right? What, how it should actually go, that whole process. And then we're gonna take that into, now we're in a challenge group, great. Now what do we do with them? What's our goal here? And how do we use this? Because that's what this challenge group is. How do we use this as something to build a business so that we can help more people and in turn also reach our own goals as from a, from a business standpoint. So, um, yeah, I'm going to unmute you real quick cause you've got a piece of paper over there. Um, okay. So Dion and I are going to kind of go through a, a, an invite process with you. Um, babe, I don't know if you want to kind of bring people into this and have this more interactive, um, straight out of the gate or what you want, how you want to roll with that, I guess. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I'm okay. So, 
First of all, what we do know is that an invite is going to look a few different ways. Usually, the best way is that you're inviting somebody you've already had a conversation with or that you've already got a relationship with, right? Cold invites, do they function? Do they work? Yeah, they do sometimes. A lot of times they don't. Okay. A cold invite is an invite where you don't know, you haven't talked to the person in a long time. You don't know them. Maybe you know them, but you haven't talked to them since high school and you just slam out with the message. Hey, I don't know if this is before you, how are you? But I wanted to invite you to this thing I got going on and it's really awesome. And we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And you know, let me know if you want information. It looks something like that, right? Where you're just kind of throwing it out there. Sometimes they work and there's been times, you know, in push times, like, so for instance, last month we were, uh, we were at, SC5 at Mar by March on, on March 31st on the day of the last day of the month between like noon and 9 PM Pacific standard time. When it, when the time cuts off, we, because there's a goal that Jan and I have, and it's never under 10 in Diana's account. It's never an option, right? Five in mine, 10 in hers. There's never a, I mean, what is it? 26 months now, 27 months that you've hit SC10, right? End of the month at SC11, even though we're at five by noon on the day of, right? So you add those people. Basically, it all goes to invite, 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 right? And just hustling those invites. Are there cold invites in that? Yeah, sometimes because you're just talking to a bunch of people. That's a specific scenario. That's a push time. And you really need to like buckle down and you're just playing the numbers game and you're just throwing it out there and going for it and not letting anything stop you, right? But on a day-to-day -day basis, on average, what we want to be doing is just inviting from people that we've already had a conversation with so that we have that relationship with them so that it's not a cold invite and we can start that conversation. So do, do this for me, Donna. Imagine that I am just a person that you've talked to a few times, but you haven't necessarily invited me, right? And this isn't a follow-up. What is that invite going to look like? Tell me what you're going to send me. What, what are you going to do? And I'm going to actually play the role here of somebody that doesn't know what, what's going on. I just get a message and I'm going to just shoot them back at her. She's not going to know what I'm going to say, but I think she'll probably know. And then I'll show you kind of how it trans, like how the, how it all kind of works out. So invite me. First of all, I typically don't invite men. So this is awkward. Well, okay. Consider me <laughs> Justine then. Okay. So I actually, I actually wrote some stuff out um, that I can share with you guys, but um, you guys have to earn this if you want it. So I'm going to go off this list to kind of show you. So um, it goes something like, Hey, Justine, um, uh, I just saw that you got back, you know, you went to Disneyland. How was it? Your kids are so cute. Um, I know this is really random and I don't know if this is your thing, but I'm putting together a spring and December health and fitness accountability group. Um, you know, do you have any health and fitness goals that you're currently working towards? Okay. So guys, I'm going to stop it right here. You're going to get two kinds of answers on this. Okay. Very rarely I have got somebody actually tell me, no, I don't have any fitness goals. <laughs> like very, literally twice maybe in the entire two and a half years or whatever it is that we've been coaching, right? Two years. Usually what you're going to get is you're going to get somebody responding in the terms of, oh my God, thank you. Yeah, Disneyland was amazing. Oh, my kids are, you know, they're great. It was so much fun. And we did this and we did that. Um, you know, yeah, it, it sounds kind of interesting. You know, I've always, of course I'm looking, you know, summer's coming and I would like to lose, you know, about 10 pounds. What's going on? Um... Would you say you want to lose 10 pounds? Yeah. Do you, would you say, I wasn't listening, I tuned you out. See, I usually read, I you usually- You can't do that. <laughs> okay, you guys stick with me here. If we're gonna role play, you gotta- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a horrible role player. Okay, go, sorry. <laughs> okay, so yes, I wanna lose 10 pounds. You wanna lose 10 pounds? Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Like, what I typically do, and this is something that's different, and this is, it's kind of in the script a little bit, um, but not really is I might say, awesome. Like, what are you currently doing? You know, um, I'll usually ask two questions, but I don't ask them together. I'll usually say, um, awesome. So are you currently doing anything for a workout? Like, are you currently doing anything, any exercise? Or I might say, Hey, what do you typically struggle with when it comes to nutrition? Those are the two questions I typically always ask, but just one at a time, because most people, or like, okay, I got my work, my workout dialed in, but it's my nutrition that sucks. So I always ask what they struggle with. So then we can find out where they struggle so we can meet their need. Um, but a lot of, uh, I'm not going to, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm not going to share what I was going to share. Cause I can share that later. Okay. So 
First of all, if you look back at the conversation, she invited me. She said something about a really, she didn't just come out and invite me. She said something about a post that she'd seen. So she related to me to my, to, to my situation. I just been on vacation, right? She asked me a question about that, mentioned it. And then she invited me to what's going on to learn more about what's going on. I responded with, thank you. Da, 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 and here are my goals. Cause she asked me, what are your, you know, are you working on any goals? So I responded with the goals, her response then, but when I responded was what's going on right? Or that might look like, yeah, give me more information. Or, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I, I could be interested. I'm not sure. Tell me about it, right? Send me information, that kind of stuff. She didn't go into, here's the information. She has no idea what the information should look like. She doesn't know. She knows I want to lose 10 pounds. That's it, right? So at this point, it immediately turns back into more questions. What are you struggling with? Right? What is your what are you struggling with in nutrition or what do you normally do? I'm gonna respond if she says something about well, what do you struggle with in nutrition? I'm gonna stop step back and say, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I eat really clean. I noticed that I eat really, really clean. Um, I just don't know why I'm not seeing the results. But you know, I, when I eat clean, I eat healthy, right? But I just I don't I don't see the results, so I'm not sure. But I think that's probably what I struggle with the most. And then I would respond with something like, Oh my gosh, I totally hear you. I know it can be, you know, nutrition can really be a challenge, like knowing how much to eat and stuff like that. Like what, what does your, what does a day look like of nutrition for you? What, what does an, a typical day look like to try to understand, you know, what they're eating, what they're consuming. Maybe they're eating too much. Maybe they're not eating enough. And even though we're not health and fitness, experts right by following these programs we've learned hey you can overeat on fruit you can overeat on healthy food so by asking them those questions then they're going to come back with what they what they eat and you might see something like oh wow they're they're not eating enough like oh my gosh i eat three times a day and i have two hard-boiled eggs and some lettuce clearly you're not eating enough that's probably why you're not getting results you know but asking those questions um really kind of opens those doors Absolutely. We're also doing something else in, the, in that scenario. When you start asking the questions, you're looking for problems that you can solve. Okay. If we don't have problems, it's hard for us to build value. So the way we build value is through figuring out what are you struggling with? Where are those problems? Where do they sit so that I can offer a, 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 a solve to that problem? I can off, offer an answer to that problem. So if, if she comes back and says, well, what are you eating right now? And I say, well, I'm eating this, this, and this. The first thing that she did before we even got to that was she empathized with my concerns, right? She understood it's, it's the kind of the feel felt found. I know exactly how you feel. I too felt the same way. Here's what I found, right? I know exactly how you feel with nutrition. I've struggled with the same thing. Back that up guys. Don't lie. We're not lying about it. If you didn't struggle with it, don't say I struggled with it. Right. But most of us at some point did struggle with the things that other people struggled with. We're going to have the same kind of concerns that most people do because it's things that most people struggle with. So step back for a second and say, okay, she's, she's, uh, she's, uh, relating to, to what I'm going through. She's, and then she's asking another question. She's still not interjecting with, here's what we do. She's asking another question. What does your diet look like? What does your nutrition look like? All I told her was I ate healthy. She has no idea. So again, it's back to me and it's back to asking questions, not trying to, for her to try to solve my problem already when she doesn't really know what my problem looks like. So I might come back with exactly what you said and say, you know, well, usually for breakfast, I, I tend to skip breakfast. I usually, I have like a snack in the morning, you know, towards lunch and I'll usually have, you know, I like to eat avocado and some fruit because I like the healthy fats and stuff. And then for lunch, I'll have chicken and some salad. And then usually at dinner, right before I go to bed, I'll have usually sweet potatoes and chicken, right? Hey, I'm eating healthy. Just like I said, I was eating healthy. She's going to immediately pick up on, okay, something's not right there. So let's just pretend that's what I said. I eat chicken and, and, and potatoes at night. That's what my diet would say something like, that sounds great. That sounds like you have a really great foundation. What I found was that it's super important. Nutrition's 80% of it and you need to eat according to your goals. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put my own self in it. So you're not like saying, well, you're doing this wrong or you're doing this wrong. What I would say is, you know, I used to think that to lose weight, I had to eat less. And what I've learned is you need to eat according to your goals, which sometimes not eating enough can actually inhibit the weight loss. And so you know, I might just ask about that and then maybe share a little bit about my experience. And then I might actually ask like, Hey, um, 
are you doing anything currently? Are you following any workout programs currently? Are you currently exercising or doing anything for workout? And that's perfect. Cause see what we're doing right there is she's addressing the food concern or the food things she's relating to it. And then she's moving the conversation in her mind. She's not solving this problem right now. She's addressed it. It's in her mind is okay. Eventually we're going to get back to this, but let's move forward and talk about, the other component that we have to offer. We've got nutrition through Shakeology. We've got nutrition through nutrition plans. Now let's move into what else we have, which is workouts and accountability groups. So the workout, what do you do for workout? You know, I was doing CrossFit and I really had a good time, but then I got hurt. I actually injured my knee a little bit, so I had to stop from that. So now I tend to do some at-home stuff with just a couple weights I have in the garage, Um, you know, like basic, really minor stuff. And then uh, every once in a while, if I can get to a class, I really like classes, I'll go to class. And then I would respond with, so caveat to this, I want to say, when you're having this conversation with people, think in your mind, maybe put a sign on your computer, on wherever you need to, to remind yourself, it's not about you. Just keep saying that in your head. It's not about me. It's about them. So if I'm trying to rush for a sale, it's all about me, but it's not, it's not about me. Yeah. You know, we want to hit those Mars. We want to hit success club, but we don't want to look at somebody as a success club point. Um, so always do that. And so always go, you know, until I know, gosh, this is really going to be the solution that they need. You need to ask more questions. So what I might do is go, gosh, you were injured in CrossFit, man, you know, me personally, when people say they do CrossFit, I say, you know, honestly, CrossFit kind of scares me a little bit. So I'm like, wow, you must be a beast. CrossFit kind of scares me a little bit. Like, and then I might actually take it off Beachbody. I might take it off. I might say, what happened? How'd you get injured? right? So that way I'm caring about them and I'm not just about, okay, let's get the sale. Or what I'll even do is, um, you know, sometimes I, I purposely do this to kind of slow myself down and to also in, let people know that I really care about them. I might just go, oh, you know, gosh, I'm sorry to hear that you got hurt. That sounds horrible. Like when that happened or whatever, or which I've shared before. Hey, I just saw that your daughter just got done with her dance recital. She's an amazing dancer. How long has she been dancing for? And then, because who doesn't like to talk about their kids, you know? And so it really share, it really shows that you care about them as a person and not just, okay, well, let, let, let's get this ball rolling. Right. So I might with just, with Justina, I might just say, Hey, gosh, you know, I'm CrossFit's no joke, man. It's a pretty, pretty, you know, whatever. I don't know what it's, I'm so much better with typing than, than <laughs> this, but, um, I might say, you know, how, how'd you get injured? What happened? And then it's, it's really just kind of taking, taking it off me and putting it back on him to, you know, really show that I care. And, and that's exactly it. So I guess from everything we're doing right here, the point we're trying to get across is every, every message ends in you not talking about you or what you're trying to do and you asking another question about them until you get to a point where you've kind of exhausted all the things you need to know. What we need to know is we need to know what their nutrition looks like, what their goals are, what fitness program they have done in the past, what they like to do, what they hate to do. And if they have any injuries, we need to know those things. Those are things that we, everybody needs to know, or we can't really for lack of a better word, prescribe, right? Appropriate, connect them with the appropriate workout. If I don't know what your goals are, I don't know where you, I I don't even know where to start. If I don't know what your nutrition looks like, I don't know how to help you. Maybe you're eating spot on and it isn't the nutrition that you have a problem with, right? Like maybe that's not really where I'm going to be able to share value with you. Maybe the value is going to be through the programs because you don't have a, I don't know this until we ask that. So we've got to ask about nutrition. We've got to ask about the workouts. We've got to ask about any injuries, And then we've got to know what do they like to do? What do they enjoy doing? Because if they don't enjoy the workout, they're not going to continue the workout, right? They're not going to get involved with it. So they're not going to get good results. And that's our end goal is getting them good results. Every single one of these goes through another question. It puts it right back in their court. And then it's asking another question to get the answers that we need to answer. We're not necessarily trying to solve the problem right now. We're just acknowledging and relating to the problem. Yes, I understand. Another question. Okay. So that's the process. Yes. I understand. I agree. I feel that way. I know how you feel, whatever it looks like. And then tell me about this and move on. Right now you're eventually going to get to a point where you are actually going to do a real like hardcore invite. If you will be like, you know, they're going to say, well, Hey, what do you know? What is this? So tell me about what's going on. Or you're going to have to come up with that information. This is what it is. Here's the program I think would fit for you. And this is why 
here's what Shakeology has meant to me, and this is why I think it'd be great for you. Here's what, you know, here's what the accountability groups are all about, and this is why I think it'd be a good fit. You're going to have to have that conversation, right? So I'm going to have, and this is where, if there's going to be objections, this is where they're going to come up. So I'm going to have Deanna say what, she, what that would look like for her right now, and then I'm going to give her pretty much every objection that you're going to get, and then I'm going to see how she fields them so that you guys can get an idea for it. So tell, tell me that invite. What does that invite look to, like to you, babe? So, well, my invite is a little bit different. So one thing I want to say that I haven't really done because like most of us do this online, right? So we're typing it out. So we have time to, to say like, show your, which it's harder to show your enthusiasm on in text. So that's why you need to use smiley faces. You need to use exclamation points, please. And thank yous. Oh, please, please, please say please. And thank yous. I have some, so many people that just say, okay, like coaches, like they'll ask me a question and then I'll answer and they'll go, okay. I'm like, what do you mean K? What happened to your basic manners, woman? But anyways, that's besides the point. So, but that comes through and it automatically like puts me on, you know, so like when somebody says something to you, you know, share your excitement, share your enthusiasm, share, share your, you have to kind of be overly to kind of get, convey that. So you're like, oh my gosh, that's going to be so great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to do this together. I'm so happy for you. Exclamation point, smiley face, LOL, bah, ha, 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 whatever you do. Um, so, um, say I've already learned about what his goals are, what, and, and I know, I know that I know that hammer and chisel is going to be the best program for him because he's looking to build muscle. He doesn't have a lot of time. And so what I'm going to say is, Hey, you know, I feel that this program hammer and chisel would be a really great fit for you. Super quick workouts, um, super simple nutrition and, you know, amazing accountability. And then what I do is I say, Hey, if I sent you a quick video, would you have time to check it out and let me know what you think? Or give me your feedback. So it's not saying, here's this, what do you want? I'm like, hey, can you do me a favor by checking it out and letting me know what you think or giving me your feedback? And people always come back saying, yeah, because you're not saying buy this. You're like, hey, just watch this three minute video. And so that's what I would do. I, you know, say why I think it would be good in like two to three sentences. And then say, if I sent if I sent you this, would you have time to walk, watch it? Because I don't know about you, but for me, I'm very visual. So if people tell me a bunch of words, I tune out or I probably won't read it all. But if I'm watching something and I'm like, oh, you get those pretty containers. Those are so cute. And look at all those DVDs you get. And then, oh my, the big old bag of Shakeology. And oh, a shaker comes up with it. And oh my gosh, look at those before and after pictures that those people got results from that, that program. So, you know, third party tools, can't say it enough. So that's what I would do. So here's, here's something else guys, this, and seriously, write this down or something. What we're doing with this entire process is we are wanting to get people plugged in a challenge group and our goal is to get them as good. I mean, we're, our goal is to get them to crush the results, everything they've ever wanted to the point where they are so ecstatic about what they've seen with themselves. And they fall so in love with the process and the programs that they want to help other people the same way that we do. Right. And then we have got a team that we're starting to build. And that is where we all grow from. That's how we meet the goals that we have to see this as a business. The entire time, everything you do right now, from the first conversation to the last conversation you have with them and talking about coaching, they are looking at you wondering, can I do, am I physically capable? Do I have the time? Can I do what you do? All of these little things they're putting in their mind, whether you recognize it or not. So when you're explaining this all this stuff, one of the great things about being a coach is we don't have to know everything. We've got all the tools for us that give us the information. We are not experts. If we had to be experts, we'd be screwed. None of us would have a business. It's just that we would all be going to school, paying a ton of money, and then we would still hope to be building a business. We have the ability to grow a business without having to be experts. So we can utilize these tools. You send them a third party tool. Guess what? You're going to talk to them eventually about coaching. They're going to say, I don't know if I can do what you do. They're not going to say that as readily if you send them a tool because they're going to think back, well, what did you do with me? You talked to me. You asked me a few questions. Then you sent me a video. Anybody can do that. You sent me a video and I thought it was cool and I joined your group and then you helped me. Like, oh yeah, I, I could totally do that. So that's, it's what we're doing here is not just as small as, hey, we're just sending a video because it's more information in a better way. It's also all these little things are grooming this person that, that, that you're talking to to let them know what coaching actually is and what we can do and you know that anybody can do it. So it's all, all those little things add up, right? 
So you send me that video and I look at it and I go, hey, this looks awesome. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna throw one objection that you may or may not get. Um, you know, that looks great, but I don't know that I've got, I don't have the weights, I don't know that I've got the room for that. I just, I don't, and I travel a lot. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have the weights or travel, I just travel too much. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a couple ways that I would actually address that. And actually, honestly, I would probably ask that beforehand. Um, a lot of times I'll, when, if I'm going to recommend hammer and chisel, I'm going to ask people, Hey, do you have any weights at home and things like that? Um, but if they're like, okay, well, you don't have a lot of weights. Like I might say, well, what do you have at home? And then, cause you can, you can modify, right? People don't need a bench for hammer and chisel. Um, you don't need a ton of weights. Like it's helpful. Or if you travel a lot, Oh my gosh, our, our guy, Pat, that's in our current challenge group, he travels probably about five days a week, like out of town, and he gets amazing results because he utilizes the at-home um, or the, the gym at the hotel. And it's awesome because he just plugs his workout right here, busts it out in 30 to 40 minutes, and he's good to go. Exactly. So what she's doing with that is she's relating to me as I have an issue. She herself does not say I travel all the time because maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. If she does, then she would say, yeah, I travel all the time and here's what I do. But in that case, just because you don't doesn't mean that you don't know somebody else that does have the same concerns. So in this scenario, it's, hey, you know what? We've got a guy in our group right now that actually goes to that same problem. And this is what he does and he loves it, right? It's just battling the objection, hitting it square in the face and showing that, yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from. I totally understand. I probably would have felt the same way. Here's what I've seen. And this is why it's different. So then they're going to come back with basically, well, how much does it cost? That's what you're going to get is how much? I mean, like, how much? How much is your health worth to you? Oh, my God. I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'd never say that. That would be so bad. Actually, um, yeah. So what I, what I typically do, um, and, and it's funny because the, the – um, a lot of times I don't get, I don't get the questions as much anymore. I think because since they put the prices a lot of times on the videos now, um, I actually, what I would actually probably do is if he says, Oh yeah, I would like that, you know, in the price, I would say, actually there's one, there's one option that I think you might really like. And then that's when I'll, and it might be backwards from what some people do, but I want to find what program they're going to start with, whether it's 21 Day Fix, Hammer and Chisel. Once we figure out that they're like, yeah, I want this program, then I'm going to say, you know what? There's this option of this all access that you have access to every single program for the next year. If I sent you a video on that, would you have time to check it out? And it says the price right on there. So that's why I love these tools because I don't have to, because that part always makes me feel icky. Even though we're really helping people and it really is a value, I love that this third party tool can do that for me. And so I'm like, Hey, you know, it gives you a year. So once you're done with hammer and chisel, then you can move on to body beast or you can do, you know, another program. If I send you a quick video that shows you everything that you get, would you have time to check it out? And right there, it then again, reiterates Shakeology talks about the portion control containers and it shares like all the, all the videos that, that you get, you know, or talks about all the, all the workout programs that you get. So that's what I would do. So you could either send, which is a great idea that, and that's, that works sending the third party app. I mean, third party tool, especially on that point. Um, if it is a scenario where it's like you are, maybe, it, maybe, I mean, right now, maybe you already sent the, the, the all access pass, which it already has the price. It has it on there. But what I, what I typically do, um, like I said, I haven't really given price that much lately, but when I do, what I try to do is I try to reiterate everything. It's usually probably my longest email. I just say like for, um, and I actually, for 21 day fix, cause that used to be the only one I used to do. I actually would copy and paste from my notes that I said, Oh yeah. Awesome. It, um, you know, you get seven blah, blah, blahs. You get the color coded containers, you get the, um, eating plan, you get the workout calendar, you get 30 days of Shakeology and you get me as your coach until you're sick of me all for only and I always put only because I think that, you know, a lot of times we can um, subconsciously make people feel that it's not a value. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Because I know when I first started coaching, I would go, oh, but it's this or it's this. But now I'm like, it's only this. And then they're like, and then they're blown away. Like more times than not, they're like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, because I just showed, I showed you third party tool of everything you get. Then I wrote out this big, huge, long list of everything that you get. And it's only this much, 
you know, and by then you've really shared the value of, Hey, it's meeting your, meeting your needs. It's, you know, it's, it's this full meal deal, if you will, for, you know, not, not a lot, honestly. But the only reason that that works guys is because all of the conversations up to that point have gone through their needs. You've asked all the questions, you've built all the value beforehand. If you just take that email and send or that message and send that out when somebody says, you send them a message saying, hey, would you like more information? They say, yeah, tell me more information. You go, here's what you get and blast that out. Guess who's never gonna respond? Or if they do respond, say, eh, no, I'm not interested, thank you though, right? There, you, you haven't built any value in it. All they see is a bunch of numbers, they don't care, right? But it's going through all those questions and building the relationship and it's building the relationship before you get into the invite. It's those relationship questions that you've talked about, right? Hey, I saw this on your page. Tell me more about this. This is awesome. It's going through that and building, turning that cold market into your warm market again, starting those relationships that then allow them to listen to what you're saying. Now you're asking the questions, you're showing your care, you care. Now it's building more trust. Now you can say it's only this much. And here's what you get and you get me and you've already gone through all their concerns. You've already, you've already brought up all their problems and you can even go in there and say, Hey, I know you struggled with this, right? Well, you get this, you know, nutrition plan, da, 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 which is really going to help because I remember you saying, you know, because it's going to help you in this category because you mentioned this or you don't like, you know, you can't drink, you can't eat breakfast. You don't have time. Hey, you know, and you get three days of Shakeology and you know, that's what I drink for breakfast. And I know that you struggle with, you know, finding time. So it's really fast and easy and it's great. You know, you can reiterate those things and show them like, hey, look, you're doing this because you care about them. And you listen to all that. You, and you really truly are, are leading with emotion, not with promotion. Then they're receptive to listening to it. All of a sudden now you've got somebody that is interested. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that? And then we're going to work through real quickly on just what to do with people when you get the challenge group. In the or does anybody have objections that they, that they, would, that they, yeah. that they would want help with? Yeah. Do you have any objections that you've gotten that you don't know how to respond to? Because I'm going to tell you, oh, go ahead, Jess. No, it's just one of the, I mean, I, we get all the same objections. It's all the stuff you guys are going through really. But I think the one I'm struggling the most with uh, responding to, and maybe it's because I'm kind of in a mountain community up here and everything, they all get really like into it at first. They start to sound like they like it. And then it kind of comes into the like, well, we're going to, you know, work, we, we, we use these programs, we start going through it. And then I get the, like, you know, I really just like doing my stuff outside and I'm really active and hiking and things, but I don't know. It's just kind of like a, well, I don't really want to, to work out in the house or I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I'm just not sure how to continue that, uh, that conversation, <laughs> you know, without, uh, so what I've been trying to say is, oh, I love that kind of stuff too. Oh my God, I love it. I just can't always get out to do that stuff. I mean, is there anything else you guys can think of? Because it's kind of the same, like, just non-commitment, no matter what, but how do you phrase it for the people that are, I don't know, you can tell they're kind of having like the snob, the snobbish reaction to. I guess what I would do, and it's kind of a little, a little blunt in a way, but I have been doing, I've been, First of all, guys, learn to love objections. When um, I went through a training, kind of the similar training that we're doing, what I've typed out for you guys, it, it was like a total mind shift. Learn to love objections. Learn to use them as a tool to learn. So we're not gonna get it right. We're gonna mess up, but it's okay. It's not like you know, you're know you dropping your baby down a toilet or whatever, I don't know, what that would be bad. But <laughs> you're, you're just like, you're, you're just blah, whatever. So learn to love them because it's an opportunity. It's also an opportunity to get to know them more, right? So if they're like, well, no, I like to do stuff outside. I'm like, awesome. I do too. Oh my gosh. But you know, I know that the, you know, the Pacific Northwest can be unpredictable. And I would honestly ask them like, Hey, is how, is that getting you to your goals? Like if you've got really specific goals, if you want to lose 30 pounds and you want to, you want to get muscle, you're not going to do that by going on a hike. Sorry. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but I would say, you know, so what are your goals or how are those getting, how is that working for you? How's that working for you to get you to your goals? And then, you know, okay, that's good. Cause I, I do, I, I kind of like my personality is sort of like, 
you know, when somebody says an objection that's like, well, I don't have time. I'm like, I know a lot of people don't have time. Like pretty much just like, yeah, that's stupid. So I don't know. I'm just trying to, I think that's a good way to do it. Just ask how close are they getting to those goals, especially yeah. in the weekend. Exactly. Absolutely. And remember that this is a good time. Like if you're, if you're going through all the questions, right. And you're, and you're figuring out what they're struggling with, by the time you even get to the point where you're talking to somebody and they're saying, I don't really have the time. I like to go out. I prefer to go outside. I would assume that you've already broached the subject of what are your goals, right? You've already walked into what are your goals. And so now, you know, okay, well, they've got these goals, right? And one of those goals I guarantee is going to come from being healthy, right? So you, at very minimum, we can look at it from the perspective of, Hey, I I'm with them. I love to do outdoor stuff. Like I'm all over hiking and mountain climbing and all that stuff. Like I think it's great. However, if it's not getting my goals, what I love about these programs is it also gives me the nutrition plan. So, Hey, it teaches you how to eat effectively to reach goals. But more importantly, one of the things I love about Shakeology is the fact that it is all about health, right? So great supplement. It's great that you now have a tool that you can supplement in with going outside with doing those things and still be working on your health and be feeding your body the necessary nutrients for it to make, to, to reach the goals and then work it into what you're doing outside. So it doesn't have to be, and guys, I think, so I think this is something that kind of gets overlooked. People think that you can either do a beach body program or something else. That's it. That's not true. You can do, it's always best, obviously, if you're going to talk about staying to goals or got strict goals to pick a program and stick with it. But there's some people out there that enjoy going to classes. Deanna goes to classes. She goes to, she every, like once a week, she'll go to a dance class because it's fun, right? It's something extra and above and beyond. It doesn't say you can't go outside. This is something else that you do as well. Now when you go outside, outside is for fun and you're enjoying it. This is about getting you to your goals, right? This is about teaching you how to eat and teach you how to train. And then outside is about having fun and enjoying life, right? So it goes back to kind of what you're talking to about as, you know, how's it reaching your goals for you? Is it working or not? Right. And if it's not, well then let's help you get to your goals as well. And you can still go outside and still do all that stuff. This just gives you something that you can do that, that you know, that you can supplement, add into it. Yeah. And Jess, I just saw that um, in the chat, you said that a lot of people will ask you maybe where's your group or what time is it? Um, I would probably say maybe check how you're inviting. Maybe you share, um, you know, Maybe I'm sharing too little is what I'm worried about now because I, I used to write big long invites with too many words and too much explanation and now I've like cut it down to almost no information mm -hmm. and so maybe it's just too elusive but right. I will never have anybody go yeah that sounds great I'd love to lose 10 pounds like no one ever says that to me right <laughs> so like I've been doing like literally the past week I, and I've been getting pretty good response. You know, of course, you still get the people that don't respond, but you're yeah. just like, okay, whatever. They're not into it. But um, then, and it's just the, um, let me find it. Um, literally just, you know, people that I've talked to before. Um, oh, shoot. Where's it at? Um, oh, my gosh. Like sorry. people you've invited before or just that you have? Either list. people I've invited before or people that I haven't invited before, but I've already talked to. I'm like, um you know, which, which they shared, um, in one of the groups. Oh, we shared it in our, our little, um, that, in the group that we had just, you know, simple, Hey lady, I'm putting together our next online health and fitness accountability group. Um, can I send you more information to see if yeah, that, that's what I was thinking last week was just, you know, pretty like, you know, just quick, yeah. not a lot of description. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, or maybe just put, make sure that you put online accountability yeah. groups. So then that's kind of like, oh. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good. How do you respond right now? When they say, where is your group at what time? How do you respond? I go, oh, it's actually online. And so it can be anytime we do our workouts, you know, ourselves at home. And then we use the group to keep each other pumped up and share our, you know, tips, tricks. Again, I try to keep that fairly short too, but I just make it clear that it's in their own time. Then, yeah. I'll, then I will kind of, if that was their first response back was like, well, when is it or whatever? I'll go, you know, tell me more about what, you know, what, what are your goals? Like, what are you working on? Do you have anything specific you're working on? That's kind of mm -hmm. how I say that usually. And just try to shift the conversation into just about them, not so much about the group because right. deal 
you know, let's talk about that. So that's like the perfect way to respond, by the way. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this on its head and I'm going to take you to a totally different perspective and see what happens here. So this is <laughs> follow me here, walk with me here. Do we need to talk about who you're inviting? Because if everybody is saying that they like outdoor stuff, maybe we need to shift the target. Yeah. Right? Maybe well, that's not, the, maybe that's not your, I've it, definitely been thinking of that lately too during my friending, you know, <laughs> Yeah. For all, I think that's a good thing for all of us to always be looking at. Like the people I was friending, the target I was friending in the beginning is not who I'm seeking out now. And I'm even, I'm shifting that again because I do think that where it's like you have this like, oh, they're really athletic and they like, you know, doing this stuff, but maybe they're just not at the same place in their lives. And they're like, you can travel the world and ski, you know, mountains everywhere. So I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Exactly. So figuring out who you're talking to, I think, is, yeah. is key in those scenarios. You know, and everybody's going to talk to somebody different. Obviously, that's the beauty of what we do. But keeping in mind, like, okay, if I'm getting a lot of those responses, or people are, I'm getting this particular objection a lot, and I can't get around it for some reason, then maybe shifting up the way you're speaking online, who you're talking to online, right? Um, we'll we'll make sure that in one of the next calls soon, we're going to go through a how to figure out who you're talking to kind of call where we walk you through the process of how to figure out who are you going after? Um, because I think that's really important so that we know how to post effectively. But uh, I think that's where I would start in your, in your scenario is look at if you're trying to find people that are all into fitness and they all happen to live in certain areas where you're dealing with outdoor activity, that might be the person that you don't, you know, maybe you'd stop friending those people and start finding people that, you know, don't no, that, that's, that's excellent excellent point so yeah, thank you that helps me a lot um are there any other questions anybody else have anything that they're coming up with that they're frustrated on or don't really know how to respond to or just don't know what to do with and no no bad questions here we're all trying to figure out the same thing. inviting in following up and conversing like champions everybody's saying yes yeah <laughs> um Okay, then I'll then I'll leave you guys I'll leave you guys alone on that. But if you come up with any questions, don't hesitate to throw them in the chat box or, um, you know, and we'll kind of go through them. So real quickly, then, to grow the to, to grow your business, and we can't not look at this like it's a business because that's the amazingness of what this is. It allows us freedom of of time and freedom of of choice on what we want to do. It can be as big as you want it to be, right? But to understand it from a business perspective, we have to understand that not only are we here to help people get more healthy and fit, we're also here to help people change their financial status. We're also here to help people help more people spread our legacy, if you will. Those things are important for us to grow as coaches. So the thing is, what do you do when you have challenge groups? Like, what is the point of getting somebody into a challenge group? Because it's more than just getting them better health and fitness, right? It's more than just getting those goals. You are putting somebody in a group with the specific, with the specific goal of getting them such incredible results that they then determine that they want to do what you do. But here's the thing. They don't know that what you do is an option because most people don't recognize that it's even available to them until they're invited to do that, until you talk to them and say, hey, look, have you ever considered doing what I do, right? So here's what you want to think about when you, when you start a challenge group, you start putting people in it. If you're a brand new coach, what you're going to do is you're going to be putting people in your, up by your coaches challenge group so that you guys can get in there together so that you don't feel overwhelmed with how to run it. You can plug that person, you plug your people in, you let them work it through so you can see what that looks like. Okay. When you plug people into that group, what you have to remember is everything I do right now, again, they're looking at it like, can I do this? Right. But your goal is to make it simple for them and to, to get them results. And as they're starting to get results, they're going to be posting, they're going to be doing stuff. You know, they're going to be active in the group when they're active. And I'm not telling you to do this. If somebody is, is not doing anything right when they're active in the group and you're seeing them really show up, you shout them out and you let them know that they're doing, because at that day, when they start being active in the group and they're posting, right, what do we do as coaches? We follow a program and we share it online, right? We follow the nutrition. So they're doing at this point what we do as coaches. So it's a perfect, perfectly normal thing to say, you're doing amazing. What we like to do with ours is we like to ask them, invite them to help us out and take a day in the group as a coach. Because what we want to do is share with them. If we, 
if we look at someone we're like, man, we would love to have them on our team. They'd be a great member of the family. They're, they kind of align with our morals. They align with the type of people that we want to be around. We like them and they would be, and we actually think they would do well that I want this person to recognize that what we do is totally within their grasp and they're already doing it. So I'm going to put them in a position right out of the gate where they can show up and do what we do, right? I'm going to say, can you do me a huge favor and take Tuesday and do what you already have been doing and just help me co-coach this group, right? Can you just, all that looks like is you just post like you're already posting. And if you see other people post in the group, just a quick comment on them, you know, just like 10 minutes in the group and just comment on other people's posts. That's it. Would you be willing to do that? And they're going to say, sure. Right. And then when they do it, if they do a good job, and again, I'm not asking you to lie. I'm asking you to be honest. If they do a good job and they show up and they do what they say, you shut them out. You let them know. You tell them, hey, thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to let you know that I don't know if you've ever considered doing what we do, but I think you would be incredible at coaching. Like you, you, I mean, you just did what we do. Have you ever thought about doing what we do as a coach? Right. And you ask that question for the new coaches. This is going to be maybe an intimidating thing for you to do because you're going to sit back and go, well, I don't even, how do I answer the questions when they come up with the questions? Two things. First of all, recognize that you don't have to ever answer a question about anything. If you don't know the answer, you can reach out to the team, reach out to the team page, reach to your upline coach and say, this is what I just got in response. I don't know how to respond. What do I do? That's what we're here for. We're here to help. So you put that question out there. We'll tell you how to respond. So don't ever feel like you have to know everything because it's just not true. Right. But all you're telling them to do is if you're, if you're feeling like, well, I don't even know what I'm doing as a coach. You know what you're doing as a coach because you're doing it. You just say, well, you know, they say, well, what do you do as a coach? Say, I, I work out, right? I follow a program. I eat my nutrition that I'm supposed to be eating as well as I can. I share it online. Right. And then I invite people to join me and do what I'm doing, just like I did with you. Right. That's, that's what you would do. And we start them out very simply. So the, the whole point of that is to get them to a place where they realize, oh, wait a minute, I could do this because at the end of the day, guys, we all can do this. If you feel like, you know, I just don't have a story to tell with coaching, right? Like some people, I know when I first started, I felt like I couldn't invite people to, to coach because we didn't have some sort of financial, you know, gain from it yet. We didn't have like a success on our own from coaching to talk about. So how could I invite somebody to join a business opportunity if I had no business success in it, right? But that's a total crock. And that's what I figured out over the past two years. The more successful you get as a coach, the less relatable you're going to be to somebody that's thinking about coaching. The more, the, the more you earn, the more you can't say, this is what I earn because people look at it and go, there's no way you earn that much. You become more unrelatable almost. What you have to do is scale it back and say, hey, you know what? what we, when you're first starting out as a coach, you are the most relatable you'll ever be because what you know is what you do, right? There's a reason that you decided to coach. That's what you share with people. Hey, what do you, I mean, like, why would I even coach? What's my story? Well, my story is there's a reason I'm doing this. Why am I doing it? Because it's got the ability to do this X, Y, and Z. Maybe it's because it's accountability. Maybe it's because you like the, the people. Maybe it's because, it, you know, the community. Maybe it's because you like the idea of the potential financial, financial security of it. Maybe it's whatever. That's what you share. You just be true to your own story and let them know. But the whole point of the challenge group is to build those potential people that want to be coaches or that let them really know there's an option to do this right? You decided to do it. There's a reason you did. You're sharing that opportunity with other people. There's also always, every time you have a challenge group, recognize that by the end of that challenge group, everybody kind of needs to fall into one or two categories. One, they're either deciding, hey, you know what? I actually want to do what you do. Or two, if they're staying on Shakeology, they're a discount coach because it's only fair that you offer them the same discount you get if they're going to continue drinking Shakeology. It saves them 16 bucks a month, or more, I've got a guy in my group right now that, that is buying two bags. So for him, it's almost $50 a month savings, right? Because you're saving 16 on the first bag. And then the second bag, you save $32 on 25%, right? Or anything else you buy above and beyond that. So it's a big savings for him. So it's not fair for me to not invite him to be a discount coach. But also from a business perspective, discount coaches help you rank advance, right? Which in turn helps you grow your business. So all of those things are important. It benefits them because they get a discount and it benefits you because it helps you in your business. All of it is important. So they either fall into the place of their discount coach or they're an active coach, right? That's the best place for them to end. Or, it, you know, they tried it and it's just not for them and that's fine too, right? Whatever. But if they're going to continue drinking Shakeology, they should be a discount coach by the end of that group. You should offer them that opportunity. And if they're 
still drinking Shakeology and they love it and they're getting amazing results, then they should be allowed to share that with other people the same way that we do, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Does anyone ever see why it's important that we look at challenge groups like a, a coach incubator, if you will? Do people get that? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Do you understand that? Okay. Does anybody have any questions about why that is or how, how to invite people to coaching or, or how to talk about coaching or any of that? What to do with the new coach? Nobody? Everybody, everybody's, everybody's golden on it? Okay. Do you, uh, do you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, okay, I have one more question. <laughs> up, yes. um, okay, so are you guys uh, only – Okay, besides like checking in and talking with your coaches, your new coaches, right? Because I'm like Amber just is, you know, signed up to our team and I want to make sure I'm giving her like the best of the best. So is it Team Rock Hard Bodies that you guys are looking to mostly for all of your training stuff? Um, and then, you know, working one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, is there anything else that I should be doing with Amber to make sure that everything is amazing? No, you're, 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 we, I tell people like, especially brand new coaches, that, that new coach starting looks like you literally keep it as simple as possible. You do your exercise, you follow your nutrition plan, you drink your Shakeology, your product of the product. You share that online. That's your, that's your main goal. You invite as many people as you can invite to join you with the goal of a minimum of three to five people joining in the next challenge group that in this case, Jessica will be running right with you. Sorry, Amber, I'm speaking to you and I didn't really say, say that, just so you know, uh, you know, with you, right? And then during that process, it makes sense. And I don't even tell, like, not all new coaches need to know this, but during that process, I feel that it makes sense that you add three to five people, depending on what social media you're on, three to five people as new friends and send out three conversations every day. Just, just a, a high five. Hey, I hope you're feeling good. Wanted to wish you a happy Wednesday, whatever. Just a simple message just to start a conversation going. That's really what we focus on. Then we take everybody and plug them into Team Rock Hard Bodies team training. And then you just follow those posts day to day. It literally says post. Well, now I think it actually changed. They were saying post day number one, post number two, number three, number four. And you could just go in succession and just, you know, follow. Them. And it gives you literal day by days. But the main focus on, just so you don't go over the world, the main focus is just do your program, follow your nutrition, drink Shakeology, share it online, invite. And then, I would, and then we would send them an invite, what invite looks like. So I've got a little script I can send you to, Jessica. It's the same one that we use in that group, okay? I just literally, I send that and say, this is what a process basically looks like. And then I if I've got that in my notes, so I'll just, uh, I'll send that over to you. Perfect. And then we just say, once you have somebody that is interested in joining you and you want to know what to do, reach out, we'll let you know. And then you just work one-on-one -on -one with them and you literally walk them through. If they have any questions, you walk them through the process, right? If they're ready to send out a link, I've got somebody who wants to sign up. Here's a video on how to send the link out. Done. And it's really, really, really straightforward. Keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And I'm going to say too that, that um, I mean, we're all a family, we're all a team, but you have to run with the willing. So you know, like Francine, you know, we, we took, well, we haven't just been on vacation, what else, but you know, we typically will talk with her one-on-one -on -one because she, she, she likes that support and she wants that support and she shows that she's showing up. So I think as a new coach, it can be kind of scary to like reach out and ask questions because you feel that they're going to be silly, but truly that's what we're here for. And by showing that you're reaching out and asking for help shows that you're serious. And so it makes us want to, um, you know, invest more time. So, I mean, cause there's different kinds of coaches and there's no wrong way to coach. Like there's some that just want to coach for the community. There's some that just want to coach to get their Shakeology paid for. There's people that want to stay home. So it's important that we meet you, Amber and Jessica, you know that, that we all meet each other where we're at and not push or pull because I want everybody to be 15 star diamond coaches. But if that's not your goal, then I'm going to burn my wheels trying to get you to do that. So, you know, everybody I treat differently. Some people I talk with, we've got scheduled weekly calls because they're pushing. There's people that are just on their own journey. So I'm like, if you have questions, reach out to me. Um, but I'm not going to push you because, you know, I need to meet you where you're at. So Amber, I think you're doing awesome. And so, you know, you're going to do so phenomenal. So 
use Jessica because she's an invaluable tool um, and, you know, truly just stay coachable. If that could be my number one recommendation, because Justin and I were the most uncoachable coaches when we were new, we were horrible because we thought we knew everything. And then once we like go, oh, we don't know anything, <laughs> then we're like, oh, so it was a big humbling experience for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So are there any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to let you guys go to the rest of your night. And what's up? I have, I have two things that I want to say. Okay. Um, so we are switching our team calls. They're not going to be every other week. So we will not have a team call next week. We will do it um, the following week. Um, just because so we can respect everybody's time and that when people show up that we've just got a ton of value to provide. Also, if you're interested in this three page document that um, I have printed out, it talks about um, dealing with objections, turning no into a go, following up customers to coaches, um, the initial reach out um, just to, you know, ask people how they're doing as well as invitations, as well as objections, as well as like the step-by-step. -step. If they say this, you say this, blah, blah, blah. If you want this, I've got a call to action. So I do this all the time and it lets me also know who, who, um, the serious are from just the, the not so serious, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but, um, if you guys want this, if you're interested in this, I want you guys to do one of two things tonight. Yes. Right now, as soon as we get off this call, I want you to either go live about something. I don't care what it is. Beach body, non beach body, whatever, whatever you ate today, your dog pooped on the floor and you think it's funny. I don't care. Something live that people can, you know, th that you're providing value of some sort, whether that's comedy, whether it's education, whether that's whatever. And then you need to tag um, Justin and I, as well as your coach, if we're not like, if Jessica is your coach, then you tag Jessica as well. Um, or you share something about your journey or transformation, but you need to show your face. I don't want stock photos of people that I don't know or, or quotes that I can read anywhere. Okay. So, and then again, tag us. And then once you do, then, um, we'll send you this too bad, Francine, do it again. <laughs> and that was, Francine, that was an epic post, by the way, that was really, really well done. That's why I shared it. It was so good. Um, but yes. So are there any other questions at all? Everybody's good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up if you're good and you understand what we talked about and you have no questions. A thumbs up? Okay. All right, guys. Well, then I'm going to let you guys go to the rest of your evening and we will see your live videos and or your posts. And it doesn't have to be a transformation photo. It could be, it could be you sharing the love of the connection of the team. But it's you, like, smiling. So happy because, oh my gosh, I've got this connection from my team and how much it just fills your soul that you get to hang out with us all the time. There you go. Done deal. All right. You guys all have a fantastic night. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining the call. And uh, we will talk to you guys very soon. We'll see you guys. Good night, everybody.